Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to give you 5 mix console tips in Cubase that will allow you to mix way faster and more efficiently. Let's get started. Cubase's mix console is super ergonomic. It has all the features that you need to mix fast and efficiently. Now, you might ask why is it so important to mix fast? And the obvious reason is to save time, because time is money. But there's another aspect of it, in my opinion, if you ask me. When you mix fast and you have all the ergonomics at your fingertips, this basically prevents you from getting ear fatigue. Because if you end up delaying your mix process and getting slower when it comes to mixing, then what's going to happen is you're going to listen to the same mix many, many more times. And this will inevitably give you ear fatigue. It will make you less sensitive to decisions that are critical when it comes to mixing. So this is another reason. It's not just about time saving. Now, I'm going to give you five tips so that you can mix faster in Cubase. I could give you way more, but let's keep it at five, right? So the first thing that I want to give you is the channel visibility tip. Now, let's say you have a really, really busy mix like this one. As you can see, I have many, many channels here. I have my drums, my bass, my guitars, keyboards, vocals, pretty much everything. And Cubase is really, really fast when it comes to navigating across your tracks. But sometimes you just want to have a cleaner look of your mixer. So as you can see, this is my mix right here. But let's say I want to work just on the bridge. And on the bridge, there are just a handful of instruments playing. Not all these instruments are playing at the same time. So let me show you what you can actually do when you are in the Cubase Mix Console. You could go here in the visibility agents and you can select to show channels for tracks with data at the cursor position or channels for tracks with data between the locators, which is something that I do all the time when I'm mixing. So in this case, as you can see, I have my locators here selecting the bridge section. And when I go here, I can just use this shortcut that I've just created, Control Alt Shift L and check what happens to my mix console. As you can see, the number of tracks that I can see right now is way smaller. And that's because we're only seeing the tracks that have data that actually play between these locators. And this is incredibly powerful. If I go, for example, in this second bridge here that we might have different channels, I can just hit the same shortcut again and then I get a different lineup of tracks. Now, if I go to the chorus, for example, and set my locators there and do the same thing, I'm going to get more channels. This means that depending on what section of your song you're working at, you can make sure that you only see the channels that are relevant, the channels that are playing at this specific section. And of course, you can do the same thing with a cursor position. So if I go right here and select my cursor position, I'm going to get only the tracks that are playing at this specific cursor location. So this is an extremely powerful feature. It's a very special feature that Cubase has. And especially if you're working with massive mixes with big arrangements, this feature can come to the rescue and it's a big deal. Let's move on to the second tip that I want to give you today. And this is the mixer configurations. Now, the mixer configurations you can set up on your own and you can find them right here at the top of the mix console. So as you can see, I have four different configurations. I have preparation, which is what I use when I start a mix and I want to get everything ready with my pre-gain, my filters, my phase reversal. All these things are built into the Cubase mixer, so you don't need to load plugins for each one of these things. Then I have the recording configuration, the FX routing configuration when I'm about to do all my routing for my effects and a buses only configuration if I want to readjust my buses. So let me show you how these look because Cubase will recall all of them. So preparation, there we go. Now I can start preparing. I can start routing my channels. I can do my high cut, my low cut filters, my pre-gain so I can do my gain staging, my phase for all the channels. And this is all inside the Cubase Mix Console. Now, maybe I want to record something. I can go and select the recording configuration. In this case, as you can see, I have only the input channels available. So as you can see, this is my microphone right here. And now I don't have anything else distracting me. I only have my input channels 
so I can start recording. Now, once I'm ready to do my effects routing, I can just go like this. And as you can see, not only I have all the channels back, but I also have my send effects showing straight away. So I can send my vocals to my reverbs, I can do my parallel compression routings and all these things. Once I've done all this, maybe I'm at the final stages of the mix and I want to readjust my buses. I can just go to buses only. And as you can see, I have my drums, bass, guitar, reverb, keys and strings. And these all happen using just one single click. So, so fast, I can go from an entirely different mix configuration to something else. And it's very easy to set up. You just set up what you want to see and then you just go add configuration and then you can just rename it. And this is how it works. The next tip I want to share with you is the effects collections. Let's say you are mixing a track and you want to focus on the vocals. Now, what happens when you want to focus on the vocals? Let's go here. I can go right here on my vocals. If I want to add an insert effect, you will see that I have a huge list of all the plugins that I have inside Cubase. Now, if you're like me and you have loads of plugins, this can make things a little bit tricky, even though, of course, Cubase has a very, very nice search function. But what if you want to just see the effects that are suitable for vocals? Enter the effects collections. As you can see right here, what I can do is I can go right here and I have a drop down menu and I can select, for example, my mastering effects, my favorite effects, or my vocal selection. So if I click on this, you will see that I have deessers, delays, reverbs, limiters, I have saturators, I have EQs, I have compressors. These are all effects that I have selected that I know work well with vocals, but I'm not getting distracted by a long list of different plugins. Now, if you want to set this up, it's actually very easy. You can go to Studio, you go to VST Plugin Manager, and right here, you can see the different collections. So we have my default, my favorites, my mastering, and my vocals. If you want to create a new collection, you just go New Collection, Empty, name it. Let's say Bass Collection, click OK. And now you can start adding effects from the list of effects that you have installed on your system to this collection. For example, if I want to add the tube compressor, I can just go here and just drop it in this collection for bass. And you can start adding folders inside this collection, for example, compressors and so on and so forth. So it's very easy to start building your own collections. And trust me, this will allow you to mix faster and be more focused on what you're doing. The next tip I want to share with you not only will save you time, but will also allow you to save some CPU and RAM resources. Let's say I have my vocals here and I want to commit to the effects that I've added because I want to have my project work a little bit more smoothly or maybe I have an underpowered CPU and I want to save resources. What you can actually do is render this channel in its entirety along with all the insert effects, but also the send effects as well. So let's say I had a parallel compressor on these vocals. I can just render this in place and this becomes a single track that doesn't take any resources on my system. So the way you do this is you have to make sure that you don't have anything selected in your project. So make sure you don't have an event selected. You just deselect everything. You select the channel that you want to render and all you need to do is go edit, render in place, render settings. And as you can see here, we have quite a few options. So we have channel settings. This will render the insert effects, the EQs, and also the channel strip. But if you want to save the entire send effects path and the group track path, you go complete signal path. Now, once you do this, the trick and the very important thing is to make sure that you disable the source tracks. This means that the track is going to be disabled, so it won't take any resources and it's going to be hidden if you click on this option right here. So when I do this, I don't need to set any locators or anything like that. I just hit render and you will see that Cubase is going to start rendering all the effects, including any effects channels and any group effects that we have and it's going to give me a render version of this. And in the background, it also disabled and hidden the original channel. So that means the original vocal is still there with the effects if I wanna go back and tweak it, but it doesn't take any resources and it's hidden out of the way, which is really neat. Now, the next tip I want to share with you can be separated into three different sections. 
So one of the things that you might want to do very often in Cubase is copy the settings of one channel to the other. For example, let's go here to this crash. And let's say I want to copy this ping pong delay to this crash right here. So there are many ways that you can do this. If you just want to copy the inserts, you can just go here, click on the inserts tab and just drag it and drop it to the channel next to it or any other channel. As you can see, when I do this, it just copies the insert effects. Now, if you just want to move the insert effects, you can just go like this and hold Alt or Option on the Mac and then it will move the insert effects instead of copying them. Now, while we're at it, if I want to undo this, I can just use the Mix Console history. So I can go like this. And there we go. We have a very nice, neat undo feature, which is completely separate to the project history, which means if I do something else in the project and I come back to the mixer, the mixer has a completely different undo history. It's not connected to the project history, which is great. But sometimes you might want to copy the entire channel settings from one channel to the other. So how do you do this very easily in the Mix Console? Now, what I showed you about copying the inserts works exactly in the same way for EQs, for send effects, for pretty much everything. But if you want to copy the entire channel settings from one channel to the other, here's what you need to do. You go here at the channel name and you just drag. And now I can drag these settings to any other channels. So if I let my cursor go here, you will see that it copied the EQ settings, it copied the insert settings, and it also copied everything else, the low cut filter, the pre-gain, and pretty much everything that was there on the original channel. So there are many ways to copy settings around in the Mix Console, and this is probably the fastest way to do this. Now I'm going to give you a bonus tip. Let's say you have some channels that you want to apply the same exact processing to them. You want to add the same EQ, the same insert effects, Pretty much everything has to be the same, but you want to go along as you mix. So let's say, for example, that I want to process these two tele guitars in the same way. What I can do, and it's actually really fast, is you can select them, right click, and choose Add VCA Fader to Selected Channels. So once you do this, a VCA Fader will be created. This VCA Fader allows us to control both these channels at the same time. But here's the trick. If you go here to the VCA settings and you click on Edit Link Group Settings, check what happens. You get this dialog. And in this case, you can just select what parameters are going to be linked. So I might choose volume, pan, EQ. I can choose the inserts and so on and so forth. And maybe I want to name this VCA group Tele Guitars and click OK. Now check what happens. Let's say I'm going to add a frequency EQ here. You will see that this was added on both guitars. Now if I do these things on one channel, this will be reflected on the other channel as well. If I go here and start editing my EQ settings on one channel, this will be mirrored over the other tele channel as well. So this is a massive time saver because that means that you could have a left and right guitar and you can have the same processing. But if you change your mind along the way while you're mixing, you can go here and change one of them and the other one will follow. So this is another very cool trick and we're using the VCA faders link to our advantage. So these were five mix console tips plus one that will allow you to mix way faster in Cubase. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.